Well, brother, I just had to wear these socks today to show the sh to show the smo who the pro really is. Yeah. <laughs> This is the schmo with the pro. He's 17 and 6. He's the number fourth ranked USC middleweight, the killer gorilla. Jared Cannonier in the flesh inside Aris Sports Medicine. Just finished up a workout. How are we doing? Oh, I'm feeling real good, schmo. After that workout, I'm going to go home, eat some dinner, go to sleep, wake up and do it all over again. So I'm feeling good. First time in history the schmo's done versus the pro. Not once, but twice, and you're the man. You put the Schmo through a workout. That was a great time. It was a real good workout, man. We did our thing today, Schmo. Schmo kept up with me big time, man. It was really good. Much better than the last time we did the Schmo versus the pro. So uh, hats off to you, brother. You've been working out. I, it definitely shows. And uh, let's do it again sometime. We appreciate that. You and Coach Al underestimating the Schmo on the Hex Bar uh, deadlifts there. I didn't underestimate you. I had faith in you, my brother. Uh, I was over here cheering you on, actually, in the back of my mind. So, uh you know, we did it, right? We did it. <laughs> so 13 weeks ago, man, you had some surgery. You had the MCL tear. Where are we at right now? That's a beautiful looking scar. Yep. Got myself a nice new little scar to add to the collection. Uh, like you said, 13 weeks post-op. I'm feeling strong. Uh, still got a couple of months before the doctor can clear me. But uh, I'm itching and ready to get back in there. I've been working on my craft. I feel like I've already made some major improvements, um, all things considered. Uh, and I'm ready to get back in there, man. Uh, things have been happening in, in the division. Uh, some new names, some new faces are popping up and I'm ready to go in there and pay, uh, see how my fist fits up against all that. So uh, I'm ready to go in there and get back to work. So the big question is, where does the killer gorilla fit in this title equation? Because we just saw UFC 297. We saw Ann New with DDP beating Sean Strickland. Before the schmo gets any further, did you have that? Did you see DDP winning that fight as a close decision? I can see it going both ways if you share the sentiment that you have to take it from the champion. But I can also see DDP uh, uh, winning that split decision. I gave him uh, two, three, and four. Two, three, and four, rounds two, three, and four. Five was pretty close. Sean picked it up at the end. Um, that could have weighed heavy in the judges' eyes. eyes. But um, I, it could have gone either way. Either way, it was a, it was a uh, close fight. Those guys went, in out, went out there and went to war. And, uh, yeah, I'm ready to get out there and get a hold of one of them, get a hold of the champ especially. Yes, so you want the champ DDP, so they're talking about what's next for him. So a lot of people calling for the rematch with Strickland. A lot of people calling for Israel Adesanya. You have Hamza Chmaev saying he was guaranteed a title shot after beating Usman, which, by the way, wasn't that supposed to be your fight? Yes, they did. It was crazy how this injury uh, unfolded for me, you know. It was Tuesday afternoon. I'm driving, driving to the gym, getting ready to do some wrestling practice. I get a call from my manager. He's saying that Costa's out. They want me to step in and fight. Uh... Uh, Hamzat, 11 days before the event. So I'm like, yes, let me go in here and confirm with my coaches and stuff. We do grappling practice, and during, in the course of practice, I tear my MCL, and I have to call them back and tell them I can't do it. And that's when they end up uh, getting Usman in. So um, unfortunate timing for the injury. Uh, just unfortunate, but I'm not going to sit here and, and, you know, collect my tears and soak about it or anything like that, you know. Back to business, you know. Uh, Injuries mean more time spent here at Area Sports Medicine, and uh, that means I'm definitely going to be getting getting better in in a, in a bunch of different ways. So, <clears throat> yes, everybody's talking about Hamza, but he has yet to fight a middleweight. That's my only that's my only qualm with it. You know, the guy is a top level fighter. He's definitely shown that in his U in the UFC. Um, he seems to be eager to fight people. So, um, if they don't give me the champ when I come back, I'll be more than happy to get that fight going again. You versus Hamza Chimaev. Absolutely. Who, me versus the best. And if you don't want to give me the best, give me whoever you feel like is next. Because I want to fight the champ. The belt's going to be mine. It's coming. It's going to happen soon. So uh, get ready. Next time, last time out, I broke a record. I looked way better than I did. The next time out, I'm going to look miles ahead of that last person. So get ready. Um, UFC, get ready fans, get ready world. The Killer Gorilla is going to make a, a crash landing on somebody. So you want a title eliminator if it's not the title shot? Realistically, when's the soonest we can see you compete inside the octagon? Best case scenario. Well, my surgeon said he would clear me in March. And after being cleared, you know, we know what that means. We can go and do our thing. Um, 
the work I'm doing here at Ares, the work we do at the lab is definitely keeping my body primed and ready to uh, jump at any opportunity that comes about. But we still want to be smart. It takes time for these sort of injuries to heal. And um, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I'm going to be 40 years old next time I step out. Not to say that that's going to be a detriment to my performance or my health and well-being. But, uh, you know, when you get to this age, things don't heal up as fast or heal up the way you really want them to. Um, not to say that that's my case. Um, but... I want to make sure that everything is in order when I get back in the octagon because I want to give my opponent and the world everything I have. I'm not going to hold back. I really want to start finishing these guys, and I've been working my craft, fixing things that I know that's going to definitely get the job done. So who do you envision is going to be holding that title if you're not getting the title shot next? Do you think DDP is going to be able to successfully defend the belt regardless of the opponent? Do you think Adesanya is going to have it? Do you think Strickland's going to have it? Who do you foresee yourself dancing with inside the cage when the title's on the line? It's hard to say, man. We Nobody thought Strickland was going to beat Adesanya, right? And then, you know, after he did that, everybody's riding high on Strickland. And a lot of people were thinking Strickland was going to be able to defend against the, uh, Drakus. It was a close fight, you know. Um, but uh, who knows where that belt's going to land. I only care about it landing in my lap, landing in my hands, giving me that opportunity, and I'm going to make good on it this time for sure. How do you foresee UFC 298, Robert Whitaker, Paulo Costa playing out? Um, I think Whitaker is very good tech technically. He's a very good technician. I think that loss to DDP may have lit a fire under his ass. So it, I'm interested to see how he's going to come out this, this next fight. Um, Costa can be aggressive. You know, he's strong. He's aggressive. He's an imposing presence in there. Um, it was the same situation when uh, Whitaker fought DDP, you know. So who knows how that fight's going to go. I will definitely be watching it, and uh, we'll see what happens. Since you're sporting your Macho Man Randy Savage socks, can you give us your best Macho Man Randy Savage impression? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> well, brother, let me tell you something. We all know the Macho Man is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, you see? And, uh, well, brother... <laughs> I just had to wear these socks today to show the sh to show the smo who the pro really is. Yeah, yeah, the smo, the pro, the smo, the schmo. Yeah, <laughs> did the schmo get the smoke? The schmo, the schmo brought the smoke today. There it is. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's it's not bad though. It's better than nothing. Yeah, certainly is. Oh yeah. And can we get a final message for all the Killer Gorilla fans out there worldwide? You guys heard it. I'm more than ready to come back, working on my craft, working on this injury and everything else in between. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be back bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, just better in every, in every respect. So um, shout out to the guys here at Ares. Thank you for having us in to uh, film and do this fun little thing and get a workout in at the same time. Big shout out, huge shout out to my team at the MMA Lab. We are coming. The world sees it. It's going to happen. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. Phoenix, Arizona. We're out.